Hello, everybody. I'm Karen Gibbs. Um, I'm the design director for Banyan Batiks, and I love Batik. That's how you say it, actually. Um, and that's what I want to um, talk about with with this Facebook Live. So if you're new to joining us, we just dive into different areas of batik, um, the process of making them, process of designing them, what we like to do with um, them in projects. Um, and today I'm focused on wax, uh, that just fabulous concept of uh, batik is really, it, um, the wax is what defines it. Um, that's what it means. Um, so as far as the wax, what, what is the wax? What do we, you know, we saw a huge bucket of, uh, wax in one of the photos that we, sh uh, shared today and it looked like peanut butter fudge, didn't it? Um, <laughs> uh, wow. Hi, Judy, Paul, and Leslie. Thanks for joining. All right. So when you're thinking about the, the wax in the application, we talked about chops and I have some chops here. You dip the chop into wax, right? And it's liquid. But how does it get to that point? Um, usually wax that's used is about 60, 40 uh, percentage wise where it's uh, beeswax and paraffin. Now beeswax is very smooth and it doesn't have a tendency to crack. Um, and uh, paraffin um, it, um, is gonna, gonna help it hold its shape a little bit more, okay? But um, the crack, if you think about the crack, kind of the veining in traditional batiks, that's, that's what the batiks are celebrated, right? Um, because it does, it's not a perfect, perfect world with batik, whereas with cotton print, it is, it, um, it's a machine that does it. This is all hand done. So please remember that um, when you're looking at, at batiks. When you go to heat up the wax, you got these big bricks of wax, right? Let's start there. You got to heat it up. Well, it has a smoking point. In other words, it's um, it ranges depending on your um, mix of beeswax and, and paraffin. And why do you not use the same mix every time? We'll get back to that in a second. But it's got a different smoking point, which then becomes toxic. So you do not want to go over that. You don't want it to smoke. It actually can catch on fire if you heat it up too fast, too quickly. Um, so you want to um, keep it between, I think it's 180 and 200 or 240 um, degrees um, because you don't want it to, um, to burn or to smoke, okay? But you want it liquid because when you use the chop, you uh, dip it into the liquid wax and then apply it, right, to um, the bat batik. Now, when you go to dip it into the liquid of wax, it's liquid. You guys know as well as I do, you take a spoon out of a pan on a stove and you go to put it in the sink, absolutely guaranteed you're going to get it on the counter on your way, right? Um, so you've got to, got to think about that too. Do you, you know, do you toss off some of the excess wax? If you toss off too much and you put it on the fabric, then it's not enough wax to seep in. Okay, and um, I think you also noticed my my um, video of me learning how to use those chops and dipping it into the wax. Um, you have to be careful not to get burned. You don't want loose clothing on, right? Because it can it can get the wax. If you have wax on your skin, think of it like um, caramel, right? It, you make caramel in the kitchen. Um, you get that that caramel on your skin. It doesn't come off very easily, and you just get a burn. So it's very you have to be very, very careful with this. Um, Libby and Pat, thank you for joining today. We're talking wax. <laughs> wax is part of the process. Okay, so um, let's go back to let's go back to the mix. Okay, as far as the wax goes, in Indonesia and and um, batik was this is a traditional um, art form um, formed um, in Java uh, Island in Indonesia. That's where the uh, batik started, okay? Um, but the mix of the beeswax and the paraffin, um, during rainy season, you're gonna use a different mix because there's so much moisture in the air, right? Um, and you don't want the cracking necessarily. And what I'm re referring to as far as cracking goes, okay, this is cracking. All right, you can see that there. And that can that can happen a few because of a few uh, different reasons. But you want the wax to hold on to the fabric. So you don't want it to flake off and you don't want the cracking. Um, during the other season, while it is very humid, 
um, in Indonesia, it's not the same as rainy season. So maybe your mix is going to be a little bit different as far as your wax goes. Um, so, and it is experimenting and it's an art form and each factory is different in how they use their, the wax. And it's a carefully guarded thing, okay? Um, just like their, you know, their chop makers, uh, these uh, that make the, use the um, copper to make the chops, they're, um, they work within the factory as well, okay? So the wax, I showed you a piece here. It's called, I call this a wax on white, right? This shows me what the design looks like. Obviously, I do a uh, black and white drawing, and we talked about, oh, we've talked about that a little bit in the inspiration. But sometimes seeing the wax on white helps understand how, the, how much wax is applied to the fabric. And if you have large expanses of the wax, you are going to get cracking because remember, we're wadding it up like this uh, to wash it, to, to bleach it, to uh, rinse it, to add color, to get color, to travel, all of those processes in batiks. So you have to know that, the yes, the wax is going to have to be crinkled up. So you want the beeswax, right? So it's not, it's pliable. Um, but you also want a little bit of the paraffin so because you don't want the color to ooze under the wax okay um so anyway the cracking in here you see a lot of cracking in here the more it sits here in my studio in colorado the more cracking because it's very dry here right uh so the wax wasn't applied uh, thinking about coloring batik in colorado so uh this wax on white it just shows a lot of the the cracking also, if you have a large expanse of wax, like I said, that's going to give you a little bit of the cracking too, okay? Oh my goodness. Hi, Scott and Christine. Thanks for joining. Um, so we're talking wax today, okay? So when you have a design, um, it's the first thing that's applied is the color, and then you apply the wax to hold that color, all right? And then you bleach out the background. So it's almost like a reverse of what you would do in, in cotton fabrics, all right? It, cotton, it's more layered um, colors, whereas batik, it's more like a watercolor thing, all right? So here's, a, here's an idea. If you want to get the idea of what I'm talking about, go grab that box of crayons, pull out that white one, and, and um, color something on a piece of paper, and then go grab some watercolor and, and see what happens when you add like a watercolor to that piece of paper where the wax was applied with the crayon, that's where it resists, right? It resists color. So this is what it is. The wax is resisting the dye that you um, submerge, maybe you submerge the piece in, um, or you uh, scrunch it up and, and smoking technique kind of thing where you apply it with like a sponge to get different colors. The wax is going to resist it. So the second color, you're applying the wax, so the first color resists the second color, okay? So you don't get an, a layer of color or muddiness of color. In your second color, if you want different colorations, like a multi-batik for your background, that's fine. It doesn't matter. You just don't want those colors added into your first coloration, okay? Now, there's one video um, that, that we showed, um, and it was, I think I was applying um, Patty Carey's, uh, using Patty Carey's chop from Vino, and we we're applying uh, the wax, and we were applying the scene, okay? Um, and this right here, you can see we've got line here, um, and that's a line of wax, right? All of this, so the wax, where is the wax in this design? It's where the line is there and the grout between the bricks, right? So the first color that was applied in what the wax is holding is the darker color here. Then it's bleached out, and then the wax still holds on, and then it um, you apply the second color there, all right? Um, how do you get the wax off? Water, warm water, you boil it. Oh, wait a minute, batiks are boiled, right? Okay, so um, that's, an, and just to talk about um, washing batiks, and most are color fast. Uh, the, the dye that we use in batiks are color fast, but we do go through a boiling of the um, batik to get the wax off as well, okay? 
All right. So this one is the result of what, what I was doing. Now, when I was doing it, I just had like a white piece. OK, so if that was truly this piece here, where would the white be? It'd be where the dark is, correct? It's almost, it's a reverse, okay? So the the uh, chop that's designed is in reverse, okay? Now also we were we were looking at when um, I was applying it and he was teaching me how to apply it. And that gentleman has been doing this for quite a few years. I think he's been employed there for over 40 years, all right? Um, he is phenomenal. He's he was very patient. I love showing the faces behind um, the fabric. I think it's really cool. Um, and I enjoy working uh, with that particular factory as well. Anyway, um, when we were applying it, you notice that he was trying to get me to lift the, the chop, right? Because if you let the chop sit, and we've got chops right here, but this is what's dipped into the wax, into the liquid wax, okay? And then you put it down, and if you let it sit, what's going to happen with liquid? Think about it. When you put a spoon down and a spoon rests around the stove, um, it just pools, right? It, it, it pools. So then you're going to lose your motif. Now, if you don't dip it into the wax every single time, you're not going to get the consistency of the motif going every single time. Okay, so if I just touched it down, that's not enough wax to hold that color and not let the other color seep in. Okay, so um, a lot going into just just wax, right? All right, another one I showed you was from the Sazerac collection, and I want to say it's this coloration here. Okay, it doesn't look like it, does it? This, the wax was applied to hold this color right here. And then we had to look at it and we did the quality control, right? Because maybe we seeped in a little bit here in this particular section. So we needed to remove wax, all right? And so the way to do that is taking the hot uh, canteen um, pen and applying it, it's metal, and then um, wiping the wax away. Also, if there were certain areas that weren't filled in, we were taking wax and applying a little bit in that section there. Okay, so each piece, each boutique goes through that where um, we're looking at the quality control. Here's another colorway of, oh, of Sazerac here with that, that particular motif that I was showing. Okay. And then Sazerac also, Tiffany Hayes Needle in a Haystack Collection. Uh, Sazerac, remember, is a, a drink uh, beverage, adult beverage, from uh, Louisiana, okay? Anyway, this see this color here, the oranges in there, right? Okay, that's all. That whole piece is covered in the, that orange color, but that's the only orange that's left. It's where the motif is. It's where the wax holds on to it, okay? Another thing is, um, I want to talk to you about this one here, and this is applied differently, okay? This one, this is a really big motif, isn't it? And what we did, instead of doing liquid wax, we took a big screen and we took what I call peanut butter wax, and we kind of scraped the, it over it. Now, why peanut butter wax? That's uh, the consistency of it, okay? So we scraped it over it through the screen, and we're able to get this big repeat okay the only thing is with that one you cannot take it off and and bleach it out and go through all the processes because it the consistency is not liquid it's not going to solidify enough it's not going to hold on it's more beeswax in there okay so it, it's like a peanut butter consistency it's not going to withstand all of those processes so with this particular kind of thing, I have to make sure my darker or my background can cover up what my motif does, okay? So I can't take it and then go scrunch it all up. I have to say, okay, my motif has to be light enough so that my background can cover it up in, in, in the color process, okay? All right, um, I wanna show you these. Cranberry Chutney is Kenna Oggs from Madison Cottage Design. It's her um, collection and they are hitting stores right now. Um, make comments, make sure you make comments today um, because we'll take a, draw, a drawing and we're gonna send out some of Sazerac and some of Cranberry Chutney, okay? So you'll be able to get them. 
All right, um, we'll do a drawing. So anyway, these right here, the motif is where the wax goes down, right? With the chop application, okay? And here's another one here, all right? So I can blend different colors. I can assign the same colors in the motif as the background if I'd like to, but um, you still wanna go through that process, okay? And here you go, here's some more. So where is, in, where is the wax applied? The wax is applied where the motif is, all right? And that is a traditional batik. So let me know if you have any questions, okay? Um, Leslie had a question. Is there a way to use non-petroleum-based wax instead of paraffin? Um, obviously, uh, the industry is um, trying to do it. Um, we do have um, a lot of different factories that, that we use, um, and we make sure, like I said, that we keep the boiling point down so we're not having a toxic, um, a toxic chemical um, into the air uh, for the workers as far as uh, safety concerns and things like that. This is hundreds of years old um, as far as this particular process. Um, so, um, the tradition of using the wax for the batik, um, and we can reuse the wax and we do reuse the wax with it. Okay. So make sure you make comments and I'll, um, try and answer them for you and we'll do a drawing. And thanks for joining me today on, um, all about wax.